Last week, two separate cases of child abuse where stepmothers beat their children to death stirred the nation. Many said the ruling was too light, and the government quickly responded by saying it will get tough on child abusers. But how tough is enough? Joining us now is Hwang jong uk professor of law at Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. Welcome. Thank you for having me here. So, Professor, one stepmom was sentenced to 10 years, and another was sentenced to 15 years, and the judge ruled that it was not murder, it was just causing bodily injury leading to death. Do you think the sentences were too lenient? Well, I think you do need to make a distinction between murder and, you know, sangyechisa, what you described, which in American criminal terms, the closest uh, counterpart would be voluntary manslaughter. And the fact that the law makes that distinction is that the murder charges are basically reserved for cold-hearted killers who premeditate and have a specific intent to murder. And basically, I guess the courts have looked at these stepmothers and didn't really think that they actually intended for the stepchildren to die. I think that's why the murder charges were not applied and voluntary manslaughter charges, the sangyechisa charges are applied. In which case, if you look at the sentence, it is within the sentencing guidelines. Well, a government report found that 80% of child abusers were, in fact, parents. And uh, this could have something to do with many Koreans still accepting spanking by parents as a form of discipline. Uh, from a legal perspective, uh, at what point does it become child abuse? I think the line is pretty hard to draw, and I think that does cause a lot of trouble for both police as well as uh, child welfare services workers. In extreme cases, like you know, two cases we have here where two children have unfortunately died, I mean, it's clear that it was too excessive. But at the same time, at what point do police get to intervene? At what point do government workers, the social workers, do they intervene? So is extending prison terms the answer? Will extra prison time or the threat of extra prison time really deter child abusers? I mean, from deterrence point of view, my feeling is that, I mean, do, do parents out there really think about, yeah, I'll get 10 years versus 30 years with the law change? I mean, it's really hard for me to think that that kind of premeditation is going on when parents are, even the abusive parents are beating their children. But I suppose what I would like to see is more resources devoted to, you know, the, to preventing cases like this, this be, before they become murder trials. Um, and what infrastructure do we have here in Korea to report and resolve domestic uh, violence? So there are children's protection services, social workers who work on cases like this. Now the government has new law, the special law on children protection, which will come into effect in September, which basically means that the additional legal steps that these social workers can theoretically take. However, the current criticism is that basically there is no money in the budget to devote to have more social workers and give them more resources. So, you know, you know, we might have a lot of additional legal, uh, legal tools, but you know, these workers on the ground might not have the resources to actually implement them. So for all those people who say that these mothers should have gotten the maximum life in jail sentence, uh, what would you tell them in the sense of where they should focus their energies? Are there other legal outlets or channels that could get this sense of justice? I suppose, you know, you could argue that sentencing guidelines have been a little lenient in some cases. And I've noticed that U.S., particularly when it comes to murder or manslaughter, do tend to have more harsh sentences. But at the same time, I think before jumping up uh, on the bandwagon because you know, all these sensational headlines are out there, I think you know, people should keep in mind that U.S. is actually a bit of an outlier in this case. U.S. actually has a higher ratio of people in, uh, incarcerated than the rest of the OECD countries, for example. So I think Koreans should, you know, looking at cases like this, do need to think a little rationally, think about, you know, do we want to have highly criminalized society, high, high police society, as opposed to putting more resources to, you know, save children at risk at earlier stages by having, you know, more robust social services. All right. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you.